We still receive a lot of questions about mission, vision, but also about moonshot goals. What do these topics mean? But more importantly, how do they all work together? So we'll explain that in this video, and at the end, we'll also show you how you can set this up in our goal management platform, Purdue. So let's start with vision. The reason there's so much confusion about vision is that vision means two different things. The first meaning is foresight. It means how do you expect a certain space to develop or a certain development to happen. An example here would be uh, SpaceX, whose vision it is that humanity does not have a long-term future on planet Earth. However, when we talk about uh, vision for, uh, in, in the form of mission and vision for an organization, we usually talk about the second meaning of vision, which is a long-term goal for the organization. So it means where do you want the organization to be five to ten years into the future? An example would be to become the global number one within a specific industry. A vision is usually not very exciting for others than, the, than uh, the management team of an organization and the shareholders. So you'll find the vision usually in the shareholders annual report, but you won't find it on the website because it doesn't really excite employees and it doesn't really excite the outside world. What does excite the outside world and employees is usually the mission of an organization. The mission is the organization purpose. Millennials, for instance, who now make up a majority of the workforce uh, are known to care a lot more about purpose than they care about pay. So the purpose is the reason the organization was created in the first place. It's why the organization has customers. It's why people transfer money to that organization. The problem with mission and vision is that this is not this is not everyday language. This is not language that, that everybody uses. So if you just go on Google and, and search for mission and vision, you'll find a lot of articles and a lot of discussions about what these things mean. So at Purdue, we recommend you to simply create an ultimate goal for the organization. And uh, in our case, we say the ultimate OKR. So the mission would translate to the ultimate objective of the organization. And the vision would simply be one of the key results for that objective. Now, this is language that people use naturally. If you watch, for instance, videos of Steve Jobs or videos of Elon Musk and, and others, you'll hear them talk about the ultimate goal of the company or to talk about the ultimate objective of the organization. They don't talk about mission and vision. So transforming your mission and vision into an ultimate goal, into an ultimate OKR for your organization, simplifies everything and it makes sure that the entire organization is able to see and able to understand the Northern Star, where it is all about what we are trying to do. When you create the ultimate goal for your organization, it's important that this is a moonshot goal. Now the term moonshot actually comes from a speech that John F. Kennedy gave at Rice University in 1962. He said, this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before the decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to earth. We choose this goal not because they are easy, but because it is hard. Because this goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Shortly after the term moonshot goal entered the dictionary. Thanks in part to Google, moonshot goals have seen a recent surge in the corporate world. In a 2013 interview with Wired, Larry Page, Google's co-founder and CEO, said, I live by the gospel of 10x. A 10% improvement means that you're doing the same as everybody else. You probably won't fail spectacularly, but you are guaranteed not to succeed wildly. This mentality is at the heart of Google X, which is responsible for moonshot projects like the driverless car. Page explains that 1000% improvements require a completely different approach towards problems, exploring the limits of what's technically possible and guaranteeing everyone will have a lot more fun in the process. Entrepreneurs like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk are also known for creating such moonshot goals for their organizations. Having a moonshot goal for your organization offers many benefits, but most importantly, it will inspire your entire team and it will help you attract talent. According to Harvard Business Review, a good moonshot goal has three ingredients. One, it inspires. If we look at Kennedy's goal, it clearly raises the spirit. And there's a reason why almost everyone knows the exciting things Google, Amazon and SpaceX are working on. Two, it is credible. A moonshot goal is not a ridiculous target. Absurd goals that lack credibility won't motivate people to actually make it happen. Yes, it must be a moonshot, but it must also have a reasonable chance of success. Three, it is imaginative. A moonshot must offer a meaningful break from the past. The route towards achieving it can consist of incremental changes, sometimes called roof shots. Yet the moonshot itself should not be an obvious extrapolation of what's happening today. You may not have a moonshot goal for your organization right now but it's worth putting in the time and energy to create one. Even if you believe that you're not working on big things such as actually putting men on the moon, I ask you to dig deeper into why your organization exists and why you do what you do. 
I'm sure you'll find something that is the true reason why your organization is there. Something that inspires not only yourself, but your entire team as well as the outside world. Once you have it, it will serve as the Northern Star for everything that's being done in your organization. It's a starting point for working with a goal management framework like OKR, and it's a starting point for working with our goal management platform, Purdue. So Daniela will show you right now how you can actually set this up in our software. In Purdue, setting up an ultimate goal for your organization is just as easy as setting up any other OKR. First, we have to add a new objective. The OKR wizard will guide you through the process. We will now enter the title for your ultimate objective. As an example, let's set the objective, connect the world with our app. The OKR lead will usually be the CEO of your company. We will skip the step of aligning the objective to another one, because your ultimate goal is at the very top of your goal hierarchy. Your ultimate goal typically has a horizon of 5 to 10 years, so we will add custom start and end dates for it. Let's say from the 1st of January 2017 to the 1st of January 2022. Now that we've successfully added our ultimate objective, we will add a key result for it. To connect the whole world with our app, we need a critical amount of people to use it. Therefore, our key result is get to 1 billion monthly active users. The last step is to define the metric and add a start and end value for your key result. There we go. Our ultimate objective is all set. Make sure to align your company-level OKRs to your ultimate goal. 